Hey guys, we're going live here with the Andrew Button Court. We're just running a few minutes late and um, just need to get, here he comes. Beautiful stream yard, you have to jump on. Yeah, I'm live, what was it, Billy? I'm going to talk about a little real estate journey with uh, Mr. Bettencourt over here. Huh? You got a seat over here. You got to walk around. <laughs> this is unscripted. Unscripted, <laughs> totally off the cuff, everything. This is good stuff. Woo! This is live and in person. This isn't even like the, the streaming backgrounds. This is the hot seat. Yes. So we love the, the office stuff for this. Um, so I wanted to talk about Daniel's journey at EXP, um, 10, 12, 13, 14 years at Remax yes. and moving over, you know, six months, what does it look like for you? And you know, what's the journey been like? Yeah. So, uh, this is what I've been in real estate since 2004. So it's been a long time. And, uh, first four years were part-time. Then I was with Remax for 12 years and Remax is a great company. They were very kind to me. Um, but once you start producing, in, in my journey, once I was producing consistently at a high level, um, I, it was just kind of repeating the same thing. So uh, the motivating factors for me moving over to EXP were um, how can I expand on what I'm already doing? I'm selling real estate, which is great. Uh, there are other opportunities with EXP to uh, grow income, grow uh, potential retirement out of the real estate. Uh, you know, just the day-to-day -day selling. So um, I was just looking for more opportunity and EXP growing fast, fastest growing company in the world, real estate yeah. brokerage wise. So that was really exciting and i um, happy I did it. And then after you joined, after I joined, I felt like, man, I should have done it a couple <laughs> years earlier when, when I was considering it, you know, I'd considered it. And uh, sometimes you just, you don't want to distract what you're doing and, and, uh, it, you know, it was it was already going well, so I felt like let me just keep keep considering it, but not interrupt my day to day operations. Well, that's a lot of a lot of questions people have is like, you know, I'm I'm successful right now, so why would I switch? And I don't want to interrupt what's going on, or I'm busy right now. I've got you know, I just talked to an agent today. She's like, you know, I'm available this afternoon. If you want to connect, she goes, well, I've got three points this afternoon, and then I'm at the office till nine o'clock. Cool. Let's set a time. How do we? You know, we don't want to inter interrupt that pattern. And there's never a good time to make a move. You know, if you wait till you're slow, then you got to rebuild. It's like the, the moving always helps you, uh, you know, uh, accelerate what you have going on. Um, and, you know, so if you always wait till you're completely dead in business, then it's a complete rebuilding process. You want to take this and have momentum behind it. Right. Um, and, you know, I moved over in December of 18 and we sat down, you know, it was like December 15th. The day I moved, you know, we sat down the next day and said, okay, why are you doing this? What's up? And just basically had some conversation of what I was doing and, you know, because we have very similar business models at the time where I had a small team, you had a small team. And then when I moved, gave me the opportunity to, to grow my team larger. And you've got a couple of things going on. You're, you're coaching um, agents on the, you know, not on the side, but with, the, with your coaching company with Club Wealth. And, you know, you've got your wife just joined Nicole. Uh, it was about two years ago. Yep. She got her license about two years ago. Mm -hmm. And I remember it was, we had a conversation. It was like to convince her to go. You know, because it was like for, for Angie and I, when I went down to Key West back in 2018 to meet with Jake Kinder and Michael Reese on this, it was like, what's the reasons to go to EXP? And then I got to bring all that back to Angie and say, okay, this is the reasons to go. Mm -hmm. And she was all game because we needed to make a change. Right. You know? uh, I was a guy that was going to die with a balloon over my head. Right. Um, and, you know, because <laughs> I never planned on leaving. And right. then all of a sudden, it's like it allowed my business to accelerate. And also, you know, not the stocks, not the revenue share, but it just allowed the, the financial gains that we had with um, just the money we're saving from Remax. Right, right, yeah. I mean, it's something that I went over with you. It's something yeah. that when I that I went over with my real estate coaches in the, in, uh, towards the end of the year, I always thought, okay, if I'm gonna move, I wanna do it kind of like on that January 1st yeah. with a new company on January 1st. I'm sure a lot of people think that same thing. But what happens is a lot of times you start considering it strongly towards the holidays, November, and we're, we're tr just trying to push business. You know, We're trying yeah. to close out the year, hit our goals, and then it, 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 there's a little conflict there because it's a big, important decision that you're considering and it's bad timing because it's at the end of the year and you're trying to accomplish all these things and there's Christmas and uh, stuff like that. So it's easy to say, this is too distracting. I'm going to put this decision off. And that's what happened with me. 
uh, for a couple years. So did you take your kids Christmas gift money and say, kids, guess what? You got new real estate signs for Christmas. Yeah. So, so for me, what ended up happening was, you know, I got some bits and pieces of it in year one in our yeah. first meeting and it was very interesting and it got my attention. But for me, I said, I'm going to let Todd be the guinea pig and see how it goes with him because, uh, I'm not totally convinced. I haven't, you know, uh, I haven't, uh, I don't think enough people knew about EXP for yeah. me to be comfortable back then. And so then like year two, I think we met again. And uh, then I was really compelled and I was talking to my coach in my coaching call saying, this is a big distraction because I really, you know, I really want to go, but I'm really afraid. Plus I've got all these, you know, transactions that are pending and active that I have to pay attention to and grow in a team. And uh, so my coach was like, you have to make a decision by next call. It's like, you're going, you're not going. And right. whatever you decide, we're just, so next call came and I'm like, I'm not going. And so, so I could just focus on my business. And then uh, I think I texted you. I said, Hey, are you ready for our, our third annual? Do you remember that text? Yes. I said, are you ready for our third annual lunch uh, EXP discussion? So on that one, uh, we find it wasn't three years. It was yeah. actually three, three meetings over two years. Yeah. And uh, we had that meeting, but my wife, you know, she was newer and, um, and she, the pandemic was happening. So that was a disruption in her first couple of years. So she was just all supportive of whatever it was that I felt like was best for the family. Right. She was all supportive in that. Yeah, and that's the thing that Angie was like, you know, what, what, what can we do to, to grow our business? Because as we tried to grow our team, it was like, it, it just got like a kind of a roadblock just trying to push because you, it does cost money out there. And, you know, I loved our broker and I, I, I would still be there today if it wasn't for the opportunities that had come across us, but I wouldn't have seen the growth I, right. I got and the opportunities that have been in front of us. And so, it's like just trying to find that happy meeting with all of it. And right. you know what, so you, you've moved companies. What was the biggest challenge as you think you saw when you moved? Cause that's like, I was never what I call a broker hopper uh -huh. and to go Me from neither. one to the next to the next. Right. And um, I, I only left Remax once to go to another Remax. Uh -huh. And I was only there for eight months and I came back. Right. And, um, and you did the same thing where you right. left ours because it was more of a location thing right. um, for you. But um, you know, the, the guys that like, oh, I, moved, I was here two years, here three years, there four years. And so being at the company for 10 years and, you know, the, the, the biggest pain points moving from one brokerage to another, what was that? that, uh, that you experienced? So same thing, you know, when you're in real estate a long time, uh, you see other agents that are bouncing around. And for, for me, I think it personally, I, I feel like that reflects poorly a little bit on the agent that they've never, never settled in, that they've never gotten their business to a point where everything is just rolling right. Like they keep looking for something different. I don't know what it is, but they bounce around from different brokerages. Sometimes it's the fees, sometimes it's uh, the, the splits, or sometimes it's the office location or, or who knows what. But I never like that look of yeah. saying, hey, today I'm with this brokerage. Tomorrow, you know, tomorrow I'm going to be with that brokerage. And it's like my annual announcement of where I'm going to be. So I think it, it was, it, I think my client personally, I felt like, you know, year after year, you're able to say you're with the same place. I think it shows to your, your customer base that you don't, uh, that you're loyal one to your brokerage, but you're also uh, steadfast. Um, moving, switching, I think when I first joined uh, Remax, I was just going from a part-time agent to a full-time yeah. agent. And uh, what I heard back then was Femax, what a lot yeah. of people hear about Remax, Femax, you know, a ton of fees. And I, I was afraid because of, of the fees. And uh, it's true, you know, there are a ton of fees and it's just something, you know, it comes with, it comes with that, with, 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 with joining them. Um, but what happens is what you feel like you're exchanging for those fees is this recognizable balloon, yeah. the, the logo. You feel like a lot of people know this balloon. And as a, as a, as a newer person to full-time real estate at the time, I wanted to align myself with something that I thought was very recognizable. So what happens is, you know, what, what in my journey, you're, you're with the company and you start wondering, like, is my success tied to the balloon or is it not? So you can sometimes it can become a crutch and you right. feel like if I leave, everyone's going to abandon me as though that they all they care about was the recognizable balloon and not the awesome service that you've been giving them and staying in touch with them over the years. So then when another, you know, like EXP comes out of nowhere and you're like, they're not recognizable like the balloon. Yep. So there's a little bit of an intimidation in, uh, so 
justifiably, you know, three, four years ago, it was true. How many agents did EXP have? 16,000 when I joined yes. two and a half years ago. And a year before that, it was probably 5,000, yeah. right? So it's just like so few. Uh, but now I would say there's no excuse. Like everyone in the whole real estate industry, you know, uh, it's just the, 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 the hottest topic in real estate, whether it's, you know, controversial or not, fastest growing company, yep. all these coaches and team leaders and top producers from all these different, you know, national locations are moving over. And uh, so now that people are learning and the comfort levels there, it's, it's exciting to be a part of the movement and not, you know, be the brand new one in the room. Well, was when I, uh, when I left, it was like, you know, the same thing, we're busy with the holidays and, tra and transactions and everything. And it's like, you know, it's, it was just a blip, but I also had my support team behind me, which helped get everything going. So I can continue to sell real estate and just move on. Mm -hmm. And people say we get bombarded with emails, of, you know, when people sign up uh, with the company and it's because, and it's, you get bombarded, but if you stay on top of the emails, because there's, you got to move your license, you got to do this, you got to do that, you got to do that. And it's not anything that's unusual with moving different brokerages. Right. It's just, you know, that's part of what they have. They don't send you a whole checklist and check it off. They make sure they get it to you on what well, this is what you need to do on day one, day two, day three, day four. Right. When you sign up, you get you get those emails. It says step one and then yeah. it'll say something like look out for step two. Yeah. And then the next day or later in the day, you'll get that email that says step two. Now do this or that. Well, if you if you step one, join the world. Step two, get on tour. Right. Point. So if you do those, those all line in with each other. Right. So you just have to. And I've document I've taken screenshots of all those emails because that's something when you when you join, it's hard to explain. So what I've done is I've saved all those emails. So when I'm bringing nice. someone onto the team or talking to someone about joining EXP, I can share with them, this is what to look out for. You're yeah. gonna get this step one email, this is what it looks like. And an explanation, even though the explanation is in the email, I'm, I'm, I'm setting the expectations of what they're going to experience when they do move over. So, um, you know, just like anything, when you move, it's, it's uncomfortable at first and there's just that little transition period that uh, is a pain in the neck. Like when you're learning how to ride a bike, you're gonna skin your knee sometimes and that, that part stinks. But you go through that and on the other side, you have, you know, like you're riding a bike and you've got this freedom and the wind blowing in your hair. And it's, and awesome. it's, it's been smooth sailing from there. So any other like top pain points that people should look out for if they're um, looking to make a move to a brokerage or even EXP um, when, they're, when they're transitioning over? So what I did knowing that we we're gonna have this talk today, I, I made some bullet points. So I'll, I'll go over some of these yeah. bullet points. Um, Let's talk so, about the negatives first, because we know there's always those pain points. Then yeah. I'll talk about the positives. Perfect. All right. So I have that uh, squiggly line divides the pros. <laughs> okay. So um, change. Number one was change is uncomfortable at first, but often necessary to grow. Uh, brand, you know, you got to change your branding. Yeah. Um, you got to follow all of these branding rules. Uh, so those things you got to become familiar. There's expense in doing that. Um, when, when you've been in real estate for many years, your old brand and all that is everywhere. Like, yep. you know, still, uh, this, this amount of time later, I still get periodic emails that have old branding on it. And I got to go in there and go, <laughs> go into my bio and change it all. So, uh, that part, you know, is, is uncomfortable. If you're a new agent, you don't have to worry about that. So that that's cool. Um, the overwhelm at first, like, when I, when I joined, I, I told myself a limiting belief in this first year, I might lose business. Yeah. Long term, I'm in it for the long term growth. But in my first year, I'm not expecting it to be easy. If I can just maintain what I did last year, to me, it'll be a success. Yeah. That's what I told myself moving over. So far, I'm having the best year. So it wasn't, it wasn't that much of a problem. Um, but uh, it can be. And, and so I would just set expectations. Don't think that you're going to switch from here to there. And then you're just going to triple your, your <laughs> production because there, there are some transitionary uh, challenges that could be a, a limiting belief. Um, number three, uh, for, you know, struggles, I would say agents that have joined EXP, some of the struggles is if you're not plugged in and you're the type of agent that has always been able to walk into your broker's office and say, Hey, I'm having trouble with this, or, Hey, my login's not working for that. Or, Hey, you know, I just got this email. Is it, is it a problem? Uh, if you're used to that, uh, you know, it, it's a crutch. Yeah. And so it, when you join EXP, you don't have that. You don't have uh, the ability to just walk into the broker's office and interrupt what he's doing to, to bring your problem to him. 
So you have to be plugged in. You have to take advantage of the mentor uh, yep. possibility. You have to lean on your sponsor. If you're not on a team, consider joining a team where you have a team leader who has all the answers and you can, that person can be that one that you call, text, walk into their office with those issues. So I would say those are the cons, you know, when I was brainstorming, those are, those are the, the cons that I came up with. So it was, you know, when we moved over, the, the logo was a big thing because we'd spent all the time rebranding and it does cost money to move and rebrand. That's why you know, one of the number one reasons I never wanted to keep, you know, move brokerages was because of that. And it's not as much as you think, depend, you know, it depends how much branding you have out there. If you're an individual agent, you usually don't have as much as the team does because we brand a lot more things. Right. Um, and we, of course, rebranded after we moved to a different team name because we we're homeless by Team Shroth. Now we're Todd Shroth Real Estate or Todd Sh but I forget what our team name is. <laughs> Tosh Road team. Um, the, um, home selling team. Uh, Tosh Road home selling team. Thank you. Business partner over here knows my team name. You have good branding because um, I yeah. see it all the time. <laughs> we keep pushing it out there. <laughs> we change it a few times. And that's the other part is that when you change it, you have to do that. And you go back and it's like Google your name and you'll see how much stuff you have out there and how much stuff needs to be changed. And it's a process. But you know what? It's not the biggest deal. It, right. it, it goes along as things go. Um, but the broker, easy. Want to talk to Andrew? We can call him right now. Right. You know, um, I've got his cell phone. He's always available for us whenever we need him. I can't just walk into his physical office, but what I can do is when I'm in the world, walk in and say to the girl at the desk, "Hey, I need to see the broker." And there's eight supporting brokers. So guess what? You can always get a hold of somebody. What I find is, you know, EXP has multiple brokers. We're in the yep. state of Florida. There's one main broker. That's Andrew Shop for yep. you know all of the agents. But there are like five other brokers. There's eight aren't? supporting brokers. Eight supporting brokers. So. My belief is, I don't know if this is this is true, but this is how I envision it because it seems like how, how the experience that I've had. If you send an email to the broker email, it's I'm, I'm imagining that it goes out to those eight <laughs> brokers and one of them responds. Yes. Quickly. Yep. So I don't have to walk into an office ever. You know, I, if I have a question, I just shoot an email to that email address yep. and I always get a response reasonably quickly. It's yeah. usually I mean, it's usually not something like I need an answer within the next 20 minutes. You have to have those expectations. Yeah. And, and so. And it's funny because I've always walked into our broker's office and it becomes conversation. And here we are an hour later shooting the shit. Well, now I like I just need to find out an answer on this one problem. Cool. I go get that and I move on with my day. Meanwhile, yeah. that broker's got no work done because yeah. after you leave, the next person <laughs> Every comes in. Doing and, the same and, thing. Yeah, exactly. The, so. um, you know, and the. Um, office stuff. I was always concerned about the office space. Well, you know, I'm a, I'm a brick and mortar person. So are you, and we want to have somewhere to go. Well, there's eight offices in the Orlando market that we can work out of with our partners that are around here. Mm -hmm. Training. There's a ton of training. Right. Um, the mentorship program is great because I can lean on that to help the new agents that are joining our team. They give me a, kind of a syllabus to go by. Right. Uh, what to kind of work with them on. Yeah. So let's talk about the pros. What are your best things you've experienced since you've been over here? Um, I think the, the, the whole point of coming to EXP was to grow. Yeah. And uh, I think you had the experience when you were at uh, your previous office, you were like the top producer. Yeah. So who do you go to, to, to help you grow? Yeah. You know, the, the broker isn't necessarily an expert on how to double your production when yeah. you're already producing more than everyone in the office. Uh, most brokers haven't had that kind of sales success. I mean, they can have success in, a, in another way, but um, so same thing at my previous broker, I was a number one agent year after year. And so there's no one really, really to lean on. So what's been awesome at EXP is we're a family. So yeah. we have, I mean, there's you, I can, I can go to you with questions on how to scale up in certain areas. Uh, and then, you know, your sponsors, we're, we're all really closely connected and everyone's very available. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's, that's probably the number one and you see, you're, you see the success of people that are very accessible to you. I mean, that's, that's, that's been amazing. So um, that is one big differentiator. Selling real estate, working with buyers, working with sellers, hasn't changed that much from where right. I came. Like we still work with the customers, we still make offers, we still use the same systems to make the offers, we still get electronic signatures. None of that has really changed much. But what changes is, learning strategies for growing your growing your potential that's yeah. that's that's the whole thing like if you 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 always want to see what's your potential and if you're in a brokerage where your potential kind of has this glass ceiling you're not going to live up to your potential so if you want to live up to your potential change is often necessary and i feel like here the opportunities are just much greater
when we um, were talking with our coach at the time about making the move, um, he goes, you know, it's don't don't be scared about it because you know it's another reason to reach out to your database. Mm-hmm. And everyone we got, we sent out a uh, Angela and I had sent out a large email to you know our entire database. Hey, we made the move, and we got a lot of like positive things. And I always thought brand mattered, and then it was like, hey, I'm the brand. Actually, I'm the reason people are calling me. They're not calling me because of Remax. And right. you know, in the beginning, sometimes a, brand, a certain brand can help you build. Um, but after a certain point, you become the brand. Right. And, you know, that's, I'm the Tosh with Home Selling team. Right. Now I know my team name. Um, <laughs> you know, you're the Daniel Betancourt team. And so, or Team Betancourt. And so, um, you know, it's, it's, that's who you are. And it doesn't matter that it just, we're brokered by mm-hmm. EXP Realty. We're brokered by Remax Realty. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. The brokerage is the venue to transact real estate yeah. legally. So, yeah. um, Joining EXP is not going to make you double your production. Like no. you have to put in the work, you have to learn strategies. So what I feel what what EXP can give you is uh, the connectivity to people who are producing at a high level, whatever level you want to produce on. Uh, you have you you're a phone call away from people who are doing yeah. over a thousand transactions a year, um, and they will respond to you because we're part of the same family, and right. that. I don't feel like you get that really anywhere else. No, because it's, I think we, we you know, we're, we're coming from the top, being the top producers in the office and they're, you know, unless we're going to other masterminds that where you're connected with those guys, they're just not always right or right in the back door. Right. There's enough of them in the Orlando market for us that we can always reach and that want to help us grow because if we help you grow, we grow. Right. And right. So, and that's, I think that's another benefit is like, you know, we've always collaborated when we're at set computer remax office and everything. Even agents in my office, I'm willing to help sit there and help build your business. I mean, there's enough real estate to be sold that I can't sit there and stop, you know, and help. And you know, my uh, field broker would always say, "Why do you want to share what you're doing? Because nobody will do it." Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm willing to open my playbook. I've always been willing to do that. Right. Why we're selling 100 homes a year? What our team model looks like? What our splits are? What everything is? Right. And it's just a matter of you know, one, do they want to do that? Do they want to start a team? Do they want to learn the pain points and all that other good stuff there? Mm-hmm. You know, but are they going to even compete against us? Because mm-hmm. again, there's no real estate in Longwood. I've got a guy in my backyard who's in our office. I'm sharing our business with him, and he's. Have we competed on an appointment together? No. Will it potentially happen? Maybe. Right. Hey, I'm going to say I'm a better agent, but um, you know, but also want to share the list. You, you, you've interviewed Jeff. Great. I right. think he's a great agent for you guys to work with. Right. Who won the next one? Because there's enough other sales. Happening. We're a good example. We we've, we've we've competed against each other in listing appointments, and there's no animosity. Like if, yeah. if the seller's going to choose who they, who they're going to choose, there are millions of homes just in our you know Central Florida market. Um, you know, look at these institutional uh, oh, yeah. uh, buyers that that are coming along. You know, they're doing thousands of transactions, and it's not really affecting the top producers. No. The top producers are still we're still finding the business, still finding the sales. Top producers, right? So yeah. the the business is out there; it's unlimited. And if you're one of those agents that's always been helpful, there are some agents that are like you know yeah. the secret playbook to <laughs> you know twenty transactions a year. Uh, so they're they're very like they they. Um, you know, they, they don't feel like that there's abundant business out there. Yeah. But if you're one that has always been the go-to person in the office, you know, if you're the one that agents come to in the office and, and look to you as a, a source of information and a source of education, um, it's a perfect fit here yeah. because that's how everyone is. Yeah. And, and uh, everyone can learn something from each other. Even if you're doing less business than me, you're doing, you you're, there's something about your business that you're probably doing on a higher level. Yeah, we're we're selling 100 houses a year each, and and you know we're we've got enough tips that we can teach you that we can show you how to sell 20 homes a year. And when I taught a class last week at the downtown office on how to become icon agent, and then we we converted that in from going going icon on how to build a farm, and there was a lot of agents in there. They've they've sold one, two, three, four, five homes, and it's like give them two pieces of advice that they can take to, to double their business, whether it's going to two homes, four homes, six homes, 20 homes to 40. Whatever you know, you can offer that little bit of advice because guess what? I'm here to help. I mean, there's enough real estate out there, obviously, in our markets to, to keep going. Right. Um, I like the fact that uh, the networks that we're plugged into mm-hmm. are all hustlers. Like, yeah. Even the ones that are not producing a lot, yeah. they're not producing a lot yet. Yeah. They're all like go getters. Everyone, you know, because of the collaborative nature, I get calls and text messages on a regular basis from you know a mixture of new agents and, and veteran agents that are just like, hey, I saw you here or there. Uh, you yep. have a minute to talk. I'm always, you know, happy to share. And that's how you've been with me over the years at, at Remax, and that's how I've been with other agents that I've met along the way. And 
and uh, because we know that there's enough business out there. Yep. And if I can help you, if I can help enough people elevate what we're doing, then it's going to help elevate the, the, the industry standard. Right. I think when you introduced me to coaching, I don't know, 2000. Yeah, a long time ago. Yeah, seven years ago or so. I was kind of blown away by how much sharing was happening. Yeah. And I think that was might have been a turning point for me. That's like, here are all these people sharing everything that they're experiencing success with. And no one here is afraid that they're going to lose all their business by sharing everything. And, and you know, that that was just a little taste of what our brokerage is, is all about now. I got I to gotta share this, this story on the coaching. So you came to me and said, hey, I was running my numbers <laughs> and I realized I didn't pay your referral fee on something that came through. And I'm like, I mean, I didn't even remember it. So right. I was like, cool, take that money and call my coach and go get three months of coaching or four months of coaching, whatever it was. Right. And that was like, you know, and I think you said this, maybe, maybe Steve said the same thing. Like, why would you do that? Why not help an agent out who wants to grow? Right. Why not invest a little bit into them? I had no financial benefit from that. I mean, I was still paying my coach retail pricing. Right. They'd say, well, you brought a new member and you can do this. Yeah. Just, and plus I forgot about it. So, right. well, didn't see the yeah. money. Yeah, and so, I, I got you back on a couple of deals later, yeah. but you, just that opportunity yeah. that you gave me was, was great. I was doing like the year end, where did all my business <laughs> come from? And I'm like, I'm going down the line and like this one came from there, there, and I'm there's one that came up and I'm like, where did that one come from? I don't remember where it where That's came my, from. my tracking like, referral system. It doesn't like, work. Gmail search the name and I'm like, oh yeah, that came from Todd. I'm like, gotta call Todd. Like, hey, nine months ago, I'm embarrassed to make this phone call, but nine months ago you you shot me over a referral and I'm going through my numbers now at the end of the year. And I see I close this person and I never paid you that referral fee. I'm, I'm sorry about that. I'll pay you right away. And then you said, use that. You know, you introduced me to your coach and you said, use that. And that was approximately the cost of three months of coaching. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that. that but you've was, gone from, you know, uh, not doing coaching at all, not believing in it to understanding coaching and now becoming a coach. Right. And so it's nice to, it's, it's nice to see that transition happen. Right. So at the time. That was, you know, I had been doing real estate for 10 years. Yeah. And so everybody's like, why do you need a coach? You've been doing yeah. real estate for 10 years. Like you, you sell 25 homes or whatever it is, 30 <laughs> homes a year. Like, why do you need a coach? You know how to do all this stuff. And that was probably my own mentality a yeah. little bit. Like, what is a coach going to teach me? I know right. how to write an offer. I know how to take a <laughs> listing. I know how to meet, you know, uh, uh, do well in face-to-face -face meetings. Like, what am I going to learn? And you don't know what you don't know. And that's the whole, that's the whole point. Everyone that we know who's performing at a high level, you know, whether it's a thousand transactions a year, all the ones that I know that are performing at that level, they have coaches. Yeah. Even though they could be the number one agent in the country, but they're being coached on something that they want to improve upon. Well, it's you know, Mike and Donna, our coaches at the time. It's funny when they say, you know, they have a coach. I'm like, so our coaches have coaches who have coaches. Right. Because they're trying to level up what they're doing. They're learning from people who have leveled up to the next level. And, and it's all living up to your your yeah. potential. Like yeah. you have to learn what you don't you don't have to, but if you I call it a yearning for learning, uh, you want to perform at, at, at live up to your potential. And the only yeah. way you can live up to your potential is keep filling those those vacant gaps. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it's like uh, you're the company you work with called Wealth. I like how they have the tier one, tier two, tier three, tier four. And we've gone on that coaching subject versus you know your, your transition exp. But it's like you're learning from people. You know, you're teaching people who are, you're selling 100 homes, you're teaching people at 50 to get to 100. Right. And then you're being coached by someone who's selling 400. Right. How do I get to 400 homes? Right. Um, and those people are willing to give back and take the time out of their day. Because, God, if I'm selling 400 homes a year and I'm still in production, we're under the team. I've got, I don't have time to be doing that stuff. So they're they're making the time in their schedule to be doing that and, and helping elevate the other people right. who are wanting to grow. And what that does is it shows you that that can be done yeah. because so-and-so is doing it. Yeah. And they're teaching you how... When you're selling, I mean, agents out there can can relate. You're selling 10 homes a year and you feel like, I'm so busy, I don't know how anyone can sell 20 homes a year. And when you sell 20 homes a year, you're like, I'm working 70 hours a week, I don't know how in the world anyone could sell 50 homes a year. And then you get to 50 homes a year and that-, that You're like, you, wow, I'm working 25 hours a week selling 50 homes a year, this is great, I finally got systems in place, now I can double that. Right, exactly. Yeah. So now we're, we're connected with people that are doing multiple hundreds of transactions yeah. a year and uh, you see, you know, their lifestyle, they're, uh, they're, you know, doing jujitsu and they're <laughs> coaching people and they're flying here and flying there and they're always speaking here and speaking there. And you're like, when do you have time to, but that's all part of it. It's just it's learning, the, it's the plan. learning how to be more efficient and effective.
So let's roll, roll back to our top of our, our main conversation, your, your time at EXP. Um, what do you see the next six months? Um, so just, just, so what happened, you know, for the first six months, my goal was to not lose any business, to keep performing at a high level and learn as much as I can about EXP. Yeah. When you, when you join EXP, you get all of these different websites. <laughs> and so I, what I did on, on, you know, week one was I created a spreadsheet and I'm like, what are all of these different EXP <laughs> websites? And so I created a spreadsheet that has them all, you know, laid out and an explanation for them all. Right. So I did that because if I'm feeling this way, I know that if, if I bring someone onto my team or if I bring someone into the brokerage, they're probably gonna feel that way. So the more, the more things that I can clear up while they're fresh on my mind, if I see there's a little bit of friction about something that I'm not understanding, as soon as I learn how to do it, I will make a video about it or I'll document it in some way. So that way, if I'm bringing someone with me, I know that question is going to come up. I have document a documented you know solution for that. So yeah. that's you know for this next six months, there's still a lot more to learn. Express offers with yeah. EXP. A lot of tools know, we still got to dive into. So too. many tools that are available to us that weren't available to us anywhere else. Um, the KV Core system, yeah. you know, that's I, I equate some of that stuff to like an Excel spreadsheet. You <laughs> you you can feel like you know a lot about it, but there's still it's like the tip of the iceberg. The deeper you dive, the more you realize you don't know, and so. It's just same thing, just constantly learning and growing, uh, growing production, growing my team, helping other agents succeed that need help. What does your team look like in six months? My team, so uh, right now we've got five agents uh, total on the team. So okay. by the end of the year, 10 agents, okay. I'd say 11 with, with myself. That's some so, good growth. Yeah, that's the goal. And just, you know, if I can consistently close 150 transactions a year, I know firsthand that I can close consistently 150 transactions a year and have time for an enjoyable life, uh, have have funds to be generous and give, uh, be able to pour into new agents and other uh, people who want to lead teams. And so, you know, just and I'm sure when I get there, my goals, my vision will change. But I feel like for, for right now where I am, that's that's my plan for the next 12 months and six months will be awesome. Yeah. Cause I think the one year in is really when you hit that, that point of like, wow, I've, it's working. I've got it. It's like for us, it was the first year was just like getting, getting the team rolling while we're at EXP. And then, you know, the 2020 came along. We're like, all right, well, you know, we had a little transition with our team hiccup, but all of a sudden we're like, let's grow. And you know, it's like um, the new coach we have, he's like, so what's your team size? Five. Why so small? Mm -hmm. You know, it made us think bigger. Now our team size is 15. Now we're by the end of the year, we'll be at 30 mm -hmm. and we're on a recruiting um, or, you know, a recruiting um, campaign campaign right now to grow the team for the, with the right players. Right. You know, everybody wants to come in and work with you, but it's like, we want to have the right people come and work with us. Right. Um, the beauty of this company as well is that if you're not a fit for the team, not that, you know, it's just we're certain dynamics that we're looking for, then we can work with you inside the company, right. not, in, you know, at the team. Right. And help coach you along the right direction. Not everyone wants to be on a team. Some people want to be a solo agent. Yeah. Some people want to be team leaders themselves. Yeah. So by meeting these agents face to face, you can determine, <clears throat> is this a person that's a great match for my team? Is this person someone that wants to learn how to be a team leader? Is this person someone that they're a solo agent, you know, maybe you always have to dive into what their goals are yeah. and uh, see what you can do to help them accomplish those goals. Awesome. Well, any uh, final points as we wrap up here? Um, I would, you know, if anyone has any questions or hesitations or uh, would like to learn more, I'm, I'm an open book and I'm happy to uh, chat and communicate. I don't know which camera is a camera, yeah, it's, but it's, <laughs> where are you from? Uh, laptop and camera. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm happy to uh, communicate and answer any questions. Uh, it's always, I think our business model has always been zero pressure. Yeah. I think that's what keeps our sphere growing with customers and keeping them. We've never been uh, high pressure salespeople. So right. um, we are coming to us because of us. You yeah. Know. We come from a place of contribution. So yeah. that's, that's how we, we uh, still work our network and partnership. So if you guys are thinking about um, whether it's making a move or what a transition looks like or you're in EXP and you have questions, you know, feel free to reach out to us. We'd love to chat. Um, we're here to help. I mean, that's the, the main goal of the business. The main, main goal of real estate is to help get back and, and keep going. Yep, yep. So cool, I guys. Agree. You all have an awesome day. Danny, I appreciate you jumping on six yes. months of DXP. We'll do a nine months and a 12 months and really see how your progress is going. We'd love to check in. 
And of course, you guys know that Daniel and I do a show on Mondays. Um, so to drive it, drive, dive into our page on Agents Who Win. Um, should request to get in there and we check out our money coaching calls. And jive with us. And jive with us. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. Thank Pop you. Put the end broadcast on there. Right there. Oh. Yeah. Cool. Woo.